the cloud. We are now recording. Wow. Okay. Well, welcome to our very first Zoom class, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to keep the format just like we do in class, which means I'm going to tell you a little bit about the song. Um, I will add optional, remember that is the key word, optional extra chords. I know some of you have been itching to get lots of extra chords. Uh, we'll go over the roadmap so you can see where we go from repeat dots and endings. If we, if we have one, sometimes there is no roadmap to follow. I will even give fingering, okay? And remember, fingering is optional as well, but I know some of you love to have that. It's a great way to, to start. I'm also going to give some suggestions as to which rhythm styles, which backgrounds to use for your songs. And if uh, some cases, I will also give some nice arranging tips. So questions, I am welcome and open to any questions that you might have. So please feel free to do that, raise your hand, or you may call me or email me after, after we do the class. Um, tomorrow's class, we're using a different book. Now I was debating whether we should rotate books on certain days, and I think I've made a decision we're going to stay in book 200 on, or, or book 274 on Mondays. We're going to stay in book 200 on Tuesdays at 11, and I'm going to open up another class either this week or next week for Friday at 11, and we'll be using book 134, the AFI's best film books, and we were using that in, in a Tuesday class and a Thursday class. Um, if you do not have a book for today and you would like to order one, please email me 5028 at FletcherMusic.com. Email me or call me and just let me know. I'll put in a book order on Wednesday after Tuesday's class. After today, Robert um, is going to scan anybody who needs the music. So again, email him or myself if you need a copy of today's song. We can't do it for very long, but we can do it while we're waiting for books to be ordered. So please let us know about that. Okay, so the song for today is These Foolish Things Remind Me of You. And it was written by a gentleman called Holt Marvell. Now that is the name that is on the, on the, name, on the book here. However, it was actually, actually Holt Marvell, his real name is Eric Maschwitz. Eric Maschwitz. So why did he use the pseudonym? Well, every now and then people did want to use pseudonyms. He was also the same guy who wrote A Nightingale Sang in Barclay Square, if any of you remember that song. Music is by Jack Strakey. Both of them were English guys. So a British cabaret singer by the name of Gene Ross was actually Mr. Mashwitz's muse. Now you got to remember, this guy was a married man. Uh-oh. Oops. And his wife thought is that the song was written for her, and it was really written for this other lady that he was having a little thing for on the side and a little affair on the side. And she was just a little cabaret singer in Britain someplace. So don't tell his wife that that's what this was all about. Okay. Uh, Billy Holiday sang this with Teddy Wilson's orchestra. Also, Benny Goodman, Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby and all those other jazzy type people did this. So that might give you an idea right there as to which kinds of backgrounds you can use for the song. The song was featured in 1936's London Review called Spread It Abroad, <clears throat> but it did not become popular until it was recorded by pianist singer Leslie Hutchinson, otherwise known as Hutch, but that was also in 1936. By the way, I actually didn't hear this song until I heard it done by a gentleman by the name of Rod Stewart. Remember him? And Do You Think I'm a Sexy Guy? And he actually did an entire album of 30s and 40s songs. And it was also done, believe it or not, by Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. So if you need to go to YouTube and look up some of these guys, please feel free to do that. Because I think you'll see that uh, sometimes these newer guys singing these songs, they either make it sound really good or they can kill it pretty badly. So here we go. I'm going to play these foolish things just for those of you who don't remember it or whose grandmothers may have played it for you. By the way, I am playing 
on a very gorgeous oak, Lowry, Liberty. Very nice. And if anybody is interested, see me after class. Ooh. <laughs> there is no song set up for this, by the way. So we are going to start it with spots of ink at 92 beats a minute. And then we'll talk a little bit about the song once I play it one time. foolish things. Okay, let's do the roadmap first. Get your books in front of you. These Foolish Things is on page 288. Now, you didn't see what I saw, Don, but there are some people applauding. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I haven't played for you guys in a long time. By the way, I'm getting a concert ready, too. I'll have to talk to Robert about when we can put that one in. Ooh. Ooh, I'm getting summertime songs, songs about summer, but we're not going to do a contest yet. The contest will have to wait because I haven't figured out how we're going to give gifts over the internet. Okay, roadmap. What do I mean by a roadmap? Well, the first thing you know you got to do is figure out where you're going, where it's sending you back to. Um, follow the lyrics. The lyrics will always take you where you need to go. So verse one. Verse one takes you to the end of line three. And you see a first ending, you've got a bracket. Whoop, get this thing out of the way. You've got a bracket and it has a one in the bracket. That tells you it's the first ending. At the end of the first ending, you have two dots, a thin line and a thick line. All right, I'm gonna make you buy your own highlighters or colored pencils because they're on the table, but you can't just reach through the, the internet here and pull one out. Make that a color. Then go back to the beginning of the song and make that the same color. That way you know exactly where you're going. Your eyes will find the color before you actually really need to know what those symbols even mean. The second verse. A tinkling piano in the next apartment. Those stumbling words that told you what my heart meant. A fairgrounds painted swings, these foolish, and there are the words end, because now you're going to jump down to the second ending, which is the beginning of the fourth line. If you need to put a different colored arrow from that point to the second ending, do so. And then it finishes the song. You just go from there to the end of the song. Actually, this is a very easy, easy, easy way of following a roadmap. The song pattern is really uh, very normal. If you count measures, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first verse is eight measures. The second verse is also eight measures. If you remember, songs go in eight measure sections. And then you have the part of the song that doesn't match anything else. It's called the bridge. You came, you saw, you conquered me. When you did that to me, I knew somehow this had to be. If you count, if you count measures, that is also eight measures. That is the bridge section. Page 289, line three, what do you see? It starts exactly the same as the beginning. The winds of March that make my heart a dancer. Okay, that's another eight measures, but it's pretty much exactly the same as the first and second eight measures. Mm -hmm. Typical, typical song pattern. So if you learn your song in sections, it's going to help you tremendously. Okay, any questions up to this point? Nope. We're good? Okay, so we talked a little bit about song pattern. Let's take a look at chords. This one is a very typical chord pattern song as well. You start with F, D minor, G minor, C. Those are your basic chords. These are very, very common in the key of F. So you learn these in pairs. F goes to D minor. Let me get it off. Let me put it on easy here. F, you can make an F with your pointer. If you just add the fourth finger, you have D minor. You don't even have to release. I know some of you like to go F, release, D minor, release. That's okay. But if you're adding a finger, you don't have to. So F, add the fourth finger, you have a D minor. Let's go to the next pair. G minor, G and B flat, going to a C7. All you have to do is pick up one finger and move it. You're going from pointer and B flat to pinky and B flat. That those four chords in a row are one of the most common chord patterns in the key of F. And after a while, your left hand will just automatically go to those chords. Okay, the bridge is usually where it gets all messed up. And when Dawn starts throwing in extra chords is where it also gets messed up. By the way, I am not making these chords up. I got them from original sheet music or I found them in a different fake book. So get out your pencils. These are the optional added chords. I know some of you have been itching for them. If you wish, you may make that very first F, an F6. Oh boy, what is that? It's a hey, four. Don, finger. I have a quick question for yes. you. Do you want me to let me know you want me to put that music up? Is what you shared with me the same as what you're saying? Yes. Yes, what I'm sharing is exactly what I, I just scanned over the music exactly as it was. Do you, you guys want, want to, do you guys want ahead, Robert to put the music up in the screen? I can see everybody. Shake your head. No. Not necessary. Not, yes. Some are maybe. saying yes, some are saying no. Okay. Go ahead <laughs> and put do, it up there. The music. I'll do a little bit of both. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Back to the very first line, F6. How do you make an F6? <laughs> It is a four-fingered chord, and you must play the notes in this order. F, A, C, D, and you must play them in that order. Remember, six chords you cannot invert. You must play with the root in the bass. For those of you who are in some of my more beginner classes, just play F. You'll be fine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, the third chord is a G minor or a G minor seven, or you may play a G minor nine. What is that? It is a four fingered chord. It is F, G, A, B. That is a G minor nine. And don't worry about which fingers you use. Just be careful that you don't end up playing a no chord because the notes are so close together, it's, too, it's very easy to accidentally hit a no chord with a G minor nine. If you can't get it, just play G minor. That's all you need. C or C7, then we go to line two. If you wish, you may make the F an F6. Measure three of that line. Cross out the C minor optional chord and make the F an F7 or an F9. What is an F9? It is E flat. 
F, G, A, all four in a row. And always check your window to make sure that you have the right chord. I love nine chords. They just sound so cool. That just adds such an element of jazz. Isn't that pretty? That's a gorgeous chord. The next one, you have an F7. It looks like it's an optional chord because it is above, it's not in a box. It's above the area where they have a box. If you wish, you may make that an F7 augmented, F7 AUG. Well, how do you play that? C sharp, E flat, F, A, and then check your window to make sure you have it right. This, by the way, can be in any order you want. However, I found that that is probably the easiest order. C sharp, E flat, F, and A. Let's go to the third line. We okay so far? We good? We good. Okay. Line three, first ending, the G can be a G7 or it can be a G9. G9 is another one of those fabulous chords. Here's a G. Here's the G7. Here's the G9. Ooh, is that pretty? F, G, A, B, all four white notes right in a row. Just kind of slap all four of those fingers right down. Easy, gorgeous. And that's it for the first three lines. Let's go to the, the, to the next line. Second measure, you have an F chord. That's good for two counts. Over the half rest, put in an E as in elephant or an E7. That is your lead in chord that takes you into the bridge, which is an, a nice, pretty A minor. Now I want you in the last measure of the page to cross out the E or the E7 and change it to a D minor, dinosaur minor. Or if you wish, it can be a dinosaur minor six, which would be D, F, A, and B. Remember the sixes must be in root position. Or just play D minor, doesn't really matter. That's good for two counts. Over the B half note for the word saw, make it an E or an E7, or an E9. There's that pretty nine chord again. D, E, F sharp, G sharp. That F sharp is your ninth of the chord, and wow, does that make it sound nice. If you can't, just play an E7. Let's go to the top of the second page. Is everybody still with me? We good? Okay. Line one, second measure, the D can be a D7 or it can be a D9. I don't think we've had that one yet. It's C, D, E, and F sharp. Gorgeous chord. They're fabulous, fabulous, fabulous chords for these old jazz standards. The C chord is good for two counts at the end of the line. Beat three of that measure over the D for the word U. Put in an A minor or an A minor seven. Let's go to the second line. Second measure. If you wish, you may make that C a C seven. Cross out the D and replace it with a C. Diminished. Oh my, what is that? C oh diminished we've had before. I love these as well because they are two finger chords. You can only play these with two fingers. C and F sharp. Hey wow. Don, go yes. ahead and go ahead and turn it up just a notch since you're just doing the chords. Yeah, on the master. All right. Just a on little. the master. Well, there or the organ. Where, where's the organ at? The organ's already at full blast. Okay, and your foot is. Foot's a little bit more now. Okay. Okay. All right, so a C diminished, here's a C chord. Here's a C diminished. Wow. And it's only two fingers, so everybody can learn how to do diminished chords. C and F sharp. The rule for that, Charlie, I know you're waiting to tell me because I know you know this. It is the letter plus 
six. You always count up six. Actually, if you count down six, you get to the same place, so it doesn't really matter. That's it for the line two. Let's go now to line three on that second page. If you wish, you may make the F and F six, F, A, C, and D. The second measure, the G minor can be a G minor seven or a G minor nine, which is F, G, A, and B flat. careful with that chord. It's very easy to make a no chord. Let's go to the next line. The F can be a six if you wish. Let's go to the third measure. Cross out the C minor option. The F can be an F7 or it can be an F9. Do you remember what that one is? We had it on the other page. E flat, F, G, A, Wow, is that pretty. Now, you don't want to be playing them nine chords in a country song because they just aren't there, so don't try to do it. It's beautiful in these standards, though. There's that F7. It's off to the side. It's not in a box, but I want you to put it in a box. Either play F7 or you can play F augmented or an F augmented 7. If you just play F augmented, it is C sharp. F and A. If you want to add the seven, it is C sharp, E flat, F and A. And that's the lead in chord to go to that B flat. Now the B flat, I want you to make it a major seven. So on the last line, the B flat is going to be B flat, capital M A J seven. Now these are jazz chords as well. And remember, it's the letter minus one. The letter plus one note to the left. Wow, is that nice. Two finger chord. Even beginners can do major sevens. They're pretty easy. It's the letter minus one. The D7 is fine. Then we have a G, you can make it a G7, or you may make it a G9. Remember, that's all these four fingers. Nice manicure, Dawn. Very nice. F, G, A, B. I have not gone to the nail salon. Please don't, don't make any comments um, about the nails. Okay, thank you in advance. And at the end of the song, you have an F chord and you have two tag chords after it, if you wish. You can just hit the ending button if you want, or you may put in a B flat or a B flat seven which is A flat and B flat, then go back to F, make it an F major seven if you wish, which is E and F, E and F, the letter minus one. Remember, you can always end a song in a major seven. You cannot end a song in a regular seven. And don't cheat, don't try to substitute the regular seven for the major sevens, it's not gonna work. It's a completely different sound. Major seven is the letter minus one. Okay, any questions about chords? Yeah, let's see if there's any questions. Let me look, any hand raises? I, actually, you can hit an F7, it just may sound funny. It's gonna sound <laughs> funny, yes. <laughs> any questions? We we'll see some hand raising, anybody? Hit? These are very smart students. I know. Did you raise hand feature? No? Oh. Charlie, you look like you're good. Gene McDonald, you look uh, musically smarter. <laughs> All right. Remember, for those of you, for those of you who are just <clears throat> learning some of these chords, pick one. Pick one that you loved the sound. Play all the chords that are there anyway. Don't use any extra chords. Maybe pick one and try one new chord and see what you think. You don't have to learn all these new ones all at once. But, but uh, the more you do them, the next time you try, you go, oh, there's that G9. I remember how to play that. And after a while, your fingers will start to remember what they did. Okay, very nice. So what kind of rhythms work on this? 
Well, we already did spots of ink and anywhere from like 92 to 102 is good depending on which background you have. If you are on a smaller instrument, a standard works very well at 92. Like a Discovery 3, you have one called Swing Time or Freedom 3. You have a background called Standard Swing. That's, it works very well. Um, Don, it looks like Wayne has raised his hand. Wayne, you have a question? Wayne's probably no. going to tell me something on an ARIA. Yeah, I, I, used, I used one. One. I thought that worked very well. Oh, the, the, okay. The song set up for the work for one. One. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, Bill. Let me, Let me try that. Go ahead and try that. And then Bill Bergwald. Bergwald? Is, yeah. He's not just using the raise hand feature. He's waving his arm. Oh. <laughs> Let me ask. All right, Bill, I asked you to unmute yourself. Go ahead and click unmute. Wonderful world works also. Wonderful world would be fabulous. Yes, I agree. This wow, those one... are two two totally different styles. Yes, That's they great. are. Wayne, Wayne, um, how fast did you go on one? It comes up at one thirty four. Uh, I think about ninety. Okay, you did take it down to ninety. Okay, I am going to try Wayne's version of one for these foolish things. All right, here we go. I'm impressed, Wayne, that works. I never would have thought of that one. Wow. It gave it just enough of a lilt, just enough of a bounce. And I think some of those extra things, because they were coming in slowly, added to the song. So yeah, give that a try. The song set up for one. Give that one a try. Um, swing and Sway is excellent on this. Tap Soft Shoe. Jazz Club is excellent. Brass Bandit works very well. Beyond a C. And if you notice, the similarity between all these different backgrounds is that it has a little bit of bounce. Now you can go the absolute opposite direction. You could go to Smoky Strings and just make it real smooth. And if you want to do that, please feel free to do that as well. That's what's wonderful about some of these wonderful jazz standards is you can take it in many different directions. Um, if you want to try it on disco, go ahead. If you want to try it on country, go ahead. Um, it's also a wonderful way to mix and match, which means if you like the country beat, if you're just trying to get a beat, you know that a country beat's always going to give you something good, then go over to your category presets and choose something that's going to give you something more of a jazz type of a sound. So you've got show or you've got big band or those of you that have this one actually has a more that gives me nostalgic sounds so if I wanted to have Harry James come and play I would go to nostalgic and even if I'm on a bouncy country background I can have Harry James play under my nostalgic in the category presets so please feel free to mix and match you guys are pretty good at getting creative with your stuff here um, Johnny Chances also works very well for those of you that have that. Um, let's try something real smooth. Let's go to Smoky Strings. I can't remember where that is. There it is. It's in Soft and Easy, Smoky Strings. We're going to play it at 90. And you're going to hear it in the same tempo, but we're going to just kind of smooth it out a little bit. So here we go with these foolish things with Smoky Strings.
gave it a completely different flavor, didn't it? Yeah, and that's what's nice is that you can feel it one way one day and the next day play it on something completely different. Let's now, give a big round of applause real oh, quick. Hold on. Go ahead and unmute yourselves. Go ahead and click on mute. Let's just give Donna, give it, give her some love. Let's hear it. Hey, Don. Okay, now. Well, hold on. Before you go, Don, um, there was a raise hand. To teach. There was a raise hand feature. Um, Ramon asked you, you. Ramon, do you have a question? Let me unmute you there. Yes. Don, on the bridge, did you play CBA and D? Oh, wait. Let me unmute uh -oh. Don. Ask him, Don, unmute yourself. I muted you by accident. Okay. Okay, well, go ahead. I was wondering if somebody was going to notice that. What I did on the bridge, which is you came, you saw the last two measures of the first page. I did a right hand finger roll between the C and the A. So what I did is I started with a five, I ended with a two. Oh, I haven't done fingering yet for you either, have I? <laughs> so I did a five on a C, a four on a B, a three on a B flat, and a two on an A. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll your fingers right down the line. And I did the same thing from the D to the B. I did five on D, four on C sharp, three on C and two on B, and I just rolled my fingers from one to the next. So Ramon, A plus for noticing that. Yes. Okay, very thank nice. you. Yep, just a very nice finger roll on that. And that just adds a little something. So any other questions? No, okay. Okay, we haven't done fingering yet, have we? People need fingering out there, want fingering? No, yes? Some are saying no. Okay, you uh, know what? We got a couple heads shaking, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a that's a tough question, Don, because you know you're okay. gonna get some yeses and some noes. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Okay. Um, I would also, I'm gonna ask this too. How many people have their computers close to their organs? Go to your uh, speaker view or gallery view, Don, and you could see a bunch of people there. All right. So you could see what, what I'm seeing. Can you see a bunch of people? Oh, hold on. I have to go to, I'm new at this. There's gallery view. Okay. So you see All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, how many people have their organs close to their computers? That's, you're not, yeah, it's about maybe one third. Okay. What I was thinking of doing, what I was thinking of doing was uh, after we do the song, that I play, we mute everybody, you go to your organs, you put it on easy only, and you play along with me. Just like we did in class where we everybody plays together. But if that's not gonna work because your computer's in a different room, hmm. Well, we don't have to do that this time, but you might wanna think about um, um, picking up your organ and moving it into the computer room, if you can do that. <laughs> that would bring everything closer together. And then you can play the organ while you're listening to me play. And then we could do like we do in class. Don, uh, uh, Pam has her hand raised. She has a question. Okay, okay. Let me unmute, ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Pam. Did you see the option to unmute yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, I talked to Linda Neum earlier, and she, I asked her that same question. And so she said, well, use your cell phone. So I have my cell phone sitting on my organ. Ah, okay. So I can see you and I can play. Woo! Nice. <laughs> nice. What an excellent suggestion. Yeah, that was yes. Linda Neum that actually told me that. Okay. Very nice. So that you, everybody heard that? Just if you can put your Zoom on your cell phone um, just for the time when we go play at the organ. Um, I think it's kind of fun to play together. I, I, this is one of the things I miss about having everybody in the store is that we could all play together. It was so much fun. 
All right, let's do some fingering and then we'll attempt to all play together, but let's write down fingering first. All right, here we go. Everybody got their pencils, their books in front of them. Those of you who don't want me to do fingering, you can go mix a drink or get a cup of coffee. Um, F2, G3, A4, G3, F2, D1, F2, A4, 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 and G3. Second line, F2, G3, A4, G3, F2, D1, F2. High D5, 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 C4, check mark. Now for Robert, that's, we, we put in a check mark when it's time to lift our hand and reposition it. C2, D3, C2. F5, F5, F5. At the end of the held F in the third line, put another check mark. A1, B flat 2, C3, D4, low D1, D1, F2, A4, G3. Let's go to the second ending. High D5, low D1. E2, F3, G4, F3. C is five, A is two in the bridge. And if you want to make it a finger roll, you take your little squiggly line and go from C down to the A. And if you want to actually write finger roll, that'll remind you to just grab every note in between. D5, B2, that is also a finger roll. So remember, put your little squiggly line from the D down to the B and that'll remind you to do a finger roll. Top of the second page, C3, D4, E5, 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 D4, C3, D4, E5, D4. G1. C4, 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 B3, B flat 2, C4, B flat 2, check mark. We're going to start a whole new phrase. This would be a good place to change a preset, by the way. F2, G3, A4, G3, F2, D1, F2. A4, 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 G3. Next line, F2, G3, A4, G3, F2, D1, F2. High D5, 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 C4, check mark. C2, D3, C2, F5, 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 and the last line is F5. Check mark if you wish, it's a whole new phrase. A1, B flat 2, C3, D4, low D1, E2, F3, G4, and F3. Okay, if you missed any of this or you got lost, you know you can come into the store and get my fingering any time. You know where my books are. You can borrow my books at any time. Okay. Any questions? Are you having fun? Yes. It's not the same. It's not the same as being back in the store. I know. I miss everybody back in the store. But for now, this is as good as it gets. And you know what? It's so much fun to see all your faces and and see all you guys at home. I love this, this is fun. Um, okay, and remember, the lovely Lowry, Lowry Liberty is for sale. And if you're very interested, call me after class. I can't say see me after class because you're not here. <laughs> all right, do you need me to play it one more time or do you want to all play together? Let's, 
I'm going to go to gallery view here. Are you, are you, do you want to all play together? Shake your heads, no or yes? Nobody really cares to do that? Okay, all right, we won't some do that. Some say yes, some say no. <laughs> some say yes, some say no. Okay, you know, um, we'll skip it today, but if you wish, you know that you can always do that. Um, I'm even wondering if we could do what we did in our players classes where we just unmute one person and have one of you guys play the song in your way of playing, and then we can mute you back up and have the next person. Um, we certainly wouldn't have time for as many people. Thank you, by the way, for everybody showing up. It says I have 34 participants. Wow, Randy wins the bet. <laughs> I, I figured there'd be 20 of you. He figured there'd be at least 30. So Randy wins. Um, I'm cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> but, I like that bet. But we can, do, we can do whatever you guys want. Remember, this is not my class. This is your class. We'll stay in book number 274 every Monday at 2 o'clock. Um, we'll go to the end of the book. And whenever the majority, then we, we can actually go back to the beginning and start it again. Or if the majority of people say, I'm ready for a new book, we can always order a new book. Remember, this is your class. We'll do what you guys want to do. OK, I'm going to play it one more time. And then that'll probably be it for the day. Let me see. Let me find where Johnny Chances are. Johnny Chances. There he is. 92. And here we go. These foolish things with Johnny. I put the allow you mute yourself. Let's give a big round of applause. Unmute yourself. Get done. Big round of applause. Woo! Very good. So thank you for your patience for the first day of class. Hopefully, we'll see some of you again tomorrow at eleven. And watch for an email for Friday. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it this week or I'll start a Friday class next week in book number 134, the AFI's best movie hits. Um, otherwise, we will see you next Monday at 2 and we'll go to the next song. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was there an email Thank for you. tomorrow? Um, yes. uh, Thank you, Dawn. Email tomorrow, three hours in advance. Okay. Yes. Nice okay. Help. Check the time on that. It'll yeah. be half an hour in advance. You, you're going to have to get you, up early. It's a, it's a six o'clock in the morning class. No. <laughs> hey, I, I, I've been doing. I've been doing good getting up by noon. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. We'll be there for you. Charlie. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Bye. Guys, thank love you, you all. We'll be there at six thank for you. you. Miss you. <laughs> thank you. You're awesome. Thanks, Don. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow or next Monday. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. 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 <laughs> okay. How do you turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. How do you turn this off? Dom, turn it off. <laughs>